Hi everyone, it's Lauren and welcome to part two of my reading wrap up for June. If you'd like to see what I read in the first half of the month, I will link that video here and also in the description box below. I read four books in the first half of the month and in the second half of the month, I've actually only finished one. I've been a bit of a naughty reader, but I am halfway through two other books and they are The Lesser Bohemians by Emma McBride, which I'm about a third of the way through. Now I absolutely loved Emma McBride's A Girl is a half Born Thing. It's one of my favourite books of all time and I was so excited um, when her, knowing that her new novel is coming out in September. Emma McBride uses a really interesting prose. She doesn't really use um, proper grammar or punctuation or um, names even for her characters. It's very him, her and she doesn't often write in full sentences. It's lots of thoughts and feelings and references all, all pushed together and I felt like that worked really really well in A Girl is a half Formed Thing. The Lesser Bohemians is about um, a young girl from Ireland who's travelled to London to go to drama school and it's her navigating London in the 90s and uh, falling in love with this old older man. First impressions for me are that her style of writing worked really really well in A Girl is a half Formed Thing. I'm not sure if it's as suited to this story, but I think it's the kind of thing that you have to really get into, and I am very much enjoying it um, now that I'm sort of a third of the way through, so I will reserve my judgment until I have finished the book. And the second book that I'm currently, I'm nearly finished actually, I'm really annoyed that I couldn't get it finished <laughs> by the end of June for this video, is Agnes Br Grey by Anne Bronte. This is my first Anne Bronte, and I have heard that she is very, very good. People have recommended her to me, and I have to say I'm really, really enjoying it. It's just about a young girl called Agnes Grey who goes to become a governess and it's it's just a very English classic. But I'm really enjoying her writing and although I haven't finished it, I would say if you're someone who doesn't really like reading classic novels or has had bad experiences with them in the past, this is a really good one because it's not very long, it's only about 200 pages I think. And her writing is so accessible that if you're not used to that sort of old-fashioned-y language, um, this would be a really good one to get you into classics. And so on to the book that I actually finished in the second half of June, which was The Museum of You by Caris Bray. Now I read Caris Bray's book of short stories, Sweet Home, um, a few months ago I think, and I absolutely loved it. It's a group of short stories which are tied together by domesticity and family and feelings of loss and longing sort of within family units, and I thought her writing was absolutely beautiful. I really enjoyed all of the stories, so was really looking forward to picking up her new novel. This is about a young girl called Clover Quinn whose mum died when she was a baby and she lives with her dad and she goes on a school trip to a museum and she has an idea because her dad has kept all of her mum's old belongings or lots of belongings, he's sort of hoarded everything in her old bedroom and has sort of left it locked up in there and is sort of refusing to deal with it. So Clover decides to put on an exhibition of her mum by going through all of these belongings and uh, creating her own museum. And it's a really interesting book. It is a very sad book and very heartbreaking, but not really as in your face as you might think, and certainly not as much as her uh, collection of short stories. But it's almost very subtly and very quietly heartbreaking, and you don't realise how sad it's going to be, I feel, until later on in the book. You get a chapter from Clover's perspective, and then a chapter from her dad's perspective all the way through the novel. And it's really interesting how Caris Bray writes from a child's perspective. I think she does that uh, wonderfully, and it really gives you a full picture of this family and their family history by having those two perspectives. And it especially works when you juxtapose the difference between what Clover is surmising about her mother by looking at these objects and what really happened, what her dad's real relationship was with her. And it's a really interesting comment on who we are to other people, who we are as a person, and if you took all of our belongings together, would that really make who we were? Does that really tell our own story? It's very well observed and I felt like all of the relationships between the characters were really believable. So although I did only read one book um, in the last couple of weeks, it was a really great one and I really, really recommend it. So just a short video from me today, I'm afraid. I promise I will have more books to talk about um, in my next wrap up because I am traveling next week for work. I'm going to Poland, so there'll be lots of chances for me to read on the plane. And I would normally say, let me know if you've read any of these and we'll have a discussion in the comments, but The Museum of You only came out, I think, a few weeks ago. <laughs> so, but I do always love hearing from you anyway. Um, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.
And naturally, if you're talking about gender being a construct, she does talk about both gender and sexuality being on spectrums. She doesn't stick to the gender binary idea. And I just really loved the book. I thought she argued really coherently and persuasively. And by the end of it, when she talks about just 